And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. Now we are pleased to announce that we have a fantastic guest on, a guy that was in the Ultimate Fighter 1. He was one of the hot topics during that entire season. He was an incredible wrestler before that. He went on to have an amazing MMA career fighting for the championship. My man, Josh Koscheck, how you doing, brother? You're looking good. Life's uh, doing you well. I'm pissed off. <laughs> well, you know, Big John, I'm doing well. Um, and it's a pleasure to, to finally uh, reconnect with you. Last time I think we've probably seen each other was you were refing one of the fights that I was in. So uh, That was it. Yeah. Yeah, different different times now. You know, That's obviously true. you've moved on to a new generation. You know, I've moved on. Um, you know, to to a new new chapter in life. But uh, life is good here, man. I, I it's this is pretty cool to to recant on this. So I'm looking forward to today, brother. Man, I, I gotta be honest, man. I miss you, man. Yeah, you live with, you live with me for years, and uh, it's funny. We were chatting about. We constantly talk about you on the show. I talk about you know. You living with me and us training together and we butted heads a lot of times, but you know what? It was, uh, it's yeah. fun, man. I look back at those days. I'm like, man, I kind of miss those days. I miss this guy. You, st you miss me trying to fight you. <laughs> that's what we did though. Right. That's, oh, what, you yeah, know, that's, that's what we I did. Could probably, I could probably, probably, I could probably say about 10 stories right now that I was like, <laughs> I'm going to kill this dude, man. Like I straight up wanted to beat his Hold, hold on. Hold on. That has not changed. It's just a different person now. Cause now uh, it's me. <laughs> oh, yeah, but it was—it wasn't just yeah. me though. I mean, it was—he—he he wanted to beat up Baroni. He wanted to beat up a bunch of other guys. You not can't just blame me. him for that. <laughs> yeah, it just shows good and, common sense. Yeah, you know it—it it works. You know, I mean, yeah, it, it, yeah. So, um, no bull s BS, but uh, you know, it's like, hey man, I'm a straight shooter. Let's just get it done. Let's go. What do you got to yeah. ask? Well, yeah. you know, here's my question: You—you you lived in Fresno for a long time. You were trained yeah. at AKA, but you were living in Fresno. You had a remarkable place. I remember. And then you picked up and went all the way across the country, almost farther than I did. Mm -hmm. And you're now in North Carolina. Yeah. What's it like there for you? Oh, I love this place. Um, for me, it's, it's great. You know, I have a ton of friends. Um, I started a new business, you know, on my out. When I was leaving fighting, I was like, man, what, I got to figure something out. You know, like, what am I going to do? Uh, you know, obviously I have a degree. I had a bunch of properties in Fresno and, you know, I had a couple of businesses there, or gyms and stuff like that. But I was like, really, what am I going to do? You know, so uh, on my way out the door, you know, I was the last couple of years, I was so focused on on my business, trying to figure out how how to just develop a business that would have longevity. And, and I started a company called Check Defense. And, uh, you know, today I think we have about 346 employees. So wow. um, so I've grown it into a pretty cool business and we're doing some amazing things, um, you know, for the DOD, um, the P department of fence, um, you know, we're supporting a lot of, a lot of our deployed, uh, soldiers that are going overseas and, and, and really doing the true fighting. So, um, you know, we, we, we provide a lot of services for, for military from the Navy SEALs to, um, you know, uh, to Navy EOD, to, um, army, um, special operations, a lot of, a lot of pretty cool opportunities for us to just go out there and, and, and just, uh, just put it on the line for, for these soldiers that are going down range. Um, so it's, it's pretty amazing, uh, what we do. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very blessed to be able to, uh, put in the effort, similar effort to what I put into probably more effort than what I put into fighting and, and wrestling over the years. Um, you know, it's not easy. It's one, it's not easy, you know, coming into a new industry like I did from fighting. You know, I came from wrestling to mixed martial arts. I didn't know anything about it. You know, I was like, I've never boxed. The only thing I've done is wrestle. So I'll figure it out. You know, um, jujitsu, never, never did jujitsu. Yeah, I'll figure it out. You know, I remember Bob Cook, you know, at the U.S. Open was choking me out every two seconds. And I was like, how the heck did he do that? You know, I was like, show me how to defend that. You know, so I was like, I'll figure it out. Um, and that's the same thing with my business, you know, I went into the defense contracting realm and didn't know anything about it, you know, um, and, you know, here we are now today, I figured it out and, you know, we're, we're, we're moving on all cylinders and, 
man, it's, it's, it's an honor to, to work with a lot of the people that I get to work with every day because it's just, uh, it's just, uh, uh, great Americans. And that's what I love about my business is I get, to, I get to work with awesome people. So, um, yeah. here we are today, you know, uh, you had a little bit the of next a, chapter. Yeah. You had a little bit of a segue in with, uh, Mark Gross, right? Oak Grove technologies and stuff. Yeah. I mean, how much of it, how much did he, did his company and him play a factor on you being able to build out your company and did he help you and how much did he help you in ball and getting that going? Oh man. He really, he just kind of let me hang out for a couple months and then it's like, Hey, get out. <laughs> 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 you know, I was like, um, okay. You know, so, um, you know, he, he obviously a good influence. Um, you know, he had a business and he's, he's one of the guys that, that, that came in and said, Hey man, you need, you have so many relationships with the military, you know, um, and you're doing all these things for the military and you're going to all these, you know, different events and fundraising. He says, you, you, you would crush it in this business. It's all about relationships. And I started thinking about it. I started putting it on paper and I started just, you know, just researching, you know, how can I create a business that, you know, has, has longevity and, and, it, and it affects and helps a lot of people. Um, and, you know, we just, I just started, started getting on the internet and, watching YouTube videos and watching anything I could and, and researching anything I could about it. And like I said, I didn't know anything. And I said, Mark, I said, I don't know the first thing you guys do in your business. I, I have mm. no clue. He's like, ah, you'll figure it out. You're smart. And I was like, all right, well, you know, <laughs> I said, I said, I'll tell you this. How's this? I'll, I'll tell you this. I tell you this, Mark. Um, you know, there's this, there's a saying that, that, that I, that I picked up not long ago. And it's, it's, I, I, I said, work, 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 man no results, but I'm a little bit better. Work, 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 work. Ah, no results, but I'm a little bit better. Work, 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 <laughs> work, 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 no results, but I'm a little bit better. Then one day I wake up, boom, work, boom. <laughs> Got it, figured it out. Winner, winner, <laughs> chicken true. digger, you know? Yeah, So it's true. It's, it's, it's just a matter of how much you want to work at something. And my whole life has been about, from my grandfather, you know, um, it's just strictly been about, you know, I'm not the best athlete and I was never the best athlete. I was never the best wrestler. I just outwork your ass, you know? And that's what I took from all my years of living on the farm in, in Waynesburg, Pennsylvania, from my grandparents teaching me to high school wrestling, to college wrestling, to mixed martial arts. And now the business is, man, I'll just outwork you. I'm not the smartest. I'm not the best athlete, but I can tell you this, I ain't going to stop working, you know? Um, so my thing is I put so much time in and, and my, my program managers all see it, man. They're like, dude, you don't sleep. I'm like one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. I'm sending emails say, Hey, we got to go. We got things to do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and it's the same mentality I brought from, you know, from my early life to mixed martial arts, to wrestling, to, now business and it's just i've just got work you you know so um but that's where i'm at you know um, raleigh north carolina love it here uh weather's absolutely freaking ass kicker right now and it's just it's awesome so yeah you know, there, it was funny because out of college when you first came everyone was talking um <clears throat> about how man this guy just he just he's He's on his own, man. He just does his own thing, but he comes in, he's constantly grinding. Like you're the leader of the team at Edinburgh, like just, but you know, like you did, you led by example. And then you get to AKA a very similar situation, right? Like you didn't really have a whole lot to say when you did it, you know, it was, it almost sounded like you were yelling at everyone, but it was more like, Hey man, you guys are good. You guys, you're the, you could be the best in the world. You were, it was positive, but it was in a yelling type of way, you know, yeah. but it was, it was meant to be positive. But yeah. I, you know, like I said, you live with me for a couple of years. And just the grind, just that, you know, you'd, you know, you'd get up and I'd say, he's already gone. He's out there running, getting his miles in and he'd come back home, get ready for training, you know, and then, you know, he'd leave with a cup of oatmeal. I think, you know, it was in a little, in a little, one of those little, uh, red oatmeal. cups. Yeah. Yeah. Oatmeal, oatmeal. Red cup. yeah. You know, so like, <laughs> yeah. whatever it was, he would take in that. He would just take with him every morning and, the, and he would just take it with him. And, um, yeah, I mean, then we'd see him at training. He'd be there an hour before, 40 minutes before stretching, trying to get loosened up and ready. One of the most focused guys that ever been around, man. And just driven. And I constantly talk about it. That's you farm know, like, life. That's why. Well, yeah, I, I think, I think some of it was, um, some of it was like, he just, he didn't, he had the desire to continue to be the best. Yeah. And it just was always on his mind. Like, no, I'm not gonna let you outwork. I'm not gonna, but even when he wasn't at AKA. 
And uh, I go down to Fresno. He's like, nope, I'm getting my rounds in. I'm going to be down at the gym. Come on down. Let's get some training. I was like, man, I'm down here on, like, on a couple of days off. He's like, there's no days off. Yeah. You know, and so it was that, but that positive reinforcement of just seeing him constantly grinding, even when, when he was out, when, when we would say he was out of shape, he still was ripped, shredded, still looked good, you know, still had the, the six pack. Fitch and I got so fucking fat. You can, <laughs> you can see us. It's yeah. like, man, you guys are going to kill your career, man. He was always getting on us about, yeah, we were all super chubby. So, yeah. but it was one of the things that I constantly talk about you, man, is your work ethic. And where did you get that from? Josh, I don't know if you know this, but there is an incredible product out there called Element. And I'm not talking E-L, I'm talking L-M-N-T, Element, one of the greatest drinks that you could have, especially if you are a runner, you're someone that's out hiking, rucking, which is a big thing right now, or if you're farming like me when it's really hot, I am telling you right now, Element is the drink that you want to have by your side. It is fantastic. It is loaded with sodium because your body needs sodium. Sodium is how it runs. It also has electrolytes and magnesium, other things that your body, magnesium is one of the most important things that you can put into it. Tell me right now, you're loving your element. I love it. I love the new watermelon flavor they just came out with. It's fantastic. You know, it's funny. When we were younger, right, they used to say, if you eat too many eggs, right, you'll have high cholesterol. Oh, yeah. All the lies. Yeah. And now now they're saying that eggs is one of the leading nutrients basically for kids' development in their brain. Same thing with salt for me, right? My career was kind of taking a little bit of a downturn because I wasn't drinking enough water. And I wasn't able to actually keep the water in me. And so I noticed that my body was, wasn't able to maintain two, three training sessions a day. So I went to the doctor. I did a hydration test. They're like, man, you're so depleted of water. You're dehydrated. They said, so I had to start salt loading. Well, Element wasn't around back then. So I basically had to take really crappy salt and put it into my body. Man. Now that they have learned that there is different levels, I, I have learned there's levels to salt. They feature some of the most premium salt in Element. So if you guys can check them out, man, they've got a thousand milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, 60 milligrams of magnesium, and they've got different flavors. They've got the grapefruit, they've got the raspberry, they've got the watermelon, citrus, black, uh, black cherry, citrus lime, flavor. citrus. Yeah. They've got all different types of flavors and I enjoy them. And it's look, they come in a can so you can just grab them on the go or they come in little mix packets as well. So That's something nice. you can just grab the mix packet, buy a bottle of water or bring a bottle of water with you if you're not ready to have it right then. And you can just mix it yourself. I also, this is the sparkling, which comes in the can. I love it. It's fantastic. It's quick on the go. Also too, my kids use this. So my kids, like my son, he's very competitive in sports. And so what I do is I'll pack one of these into his lacrosse bag or into his soccer bag, and he'll just have it available to him. Now, I will say this. One little caveat is make sure it's cold. Oh, yeah. It is a lot more enjoyable when it is cold. Don't get me wrong. I can drink it when it's not. But let me just tell you, it's like cracking open a nice cold beer. It's, that's what it tastes like when it's cold. You crack it open, boom, put it down. It's fantastic. So it's something I can get on the go. So check it out, Element. Use the link in the descriptions down below. Every purchase you guys get through our link down below, they will actually send you a bonus package of uh, products free product. or whatever. Yeah, free products. So check that out down below. I want to thank you guys for continuing to support us. Stay salty, my friends. Well, that's I got it from my the farm. You know, my, my grandma. You know, grandma, uh, grandma, and grandpa Koscheck, and just you know my my you know I, I got raised by my grandparents, um, and you know. I saw their kids, you know, my grandfather was like, Hey man, I'm up at five 30. Your ass is up at five 30. You know, it's like, you know, we just, it was just a way of life, you know? I mean, yeah. obviously times have changed for a lot of these kids. I mean, I, I grew up on a 130 acre farm and, you know, I, I, I remember us, you know, I was driving a truck at, you know, five years old, you know, <laughs> the, the stick a F one fifty. you know, like, Hey, we got bail. Hey. And it was like, you're the it's little dude. You're the littlest dude. Get in so there. You're and drive. driving so the truck put, to pull the trailer, and we'll bail it up on there. Exactly. They would scoot the damn the damn thing up. You know how to drive this thing? I'm like, yeah, I'll figure it out. <laughs> you know, so I'd be on pillows, and you know, I was driving a truck at you know five six years old, and yeah. um, driving tractors, and and it's just you know cutting firewood. My grandfather was you know we we obviously had a a, a wood burning stove at the time that that basically heated our whole house. And we had to, we had to cut firewood. So it was, you know, we, my grandparents, you know, instilled it in us young as like, Hey man, you know, you're not in this, in this life, life is hard. One, two, nobody's going to give you shit for free. 
you know, um, it's, you got to go and earn it. So, and that's, that's where it learned. I, I learned it all from there. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's something that I, I truly today, I still, I, I try every morning when I wake my son up because, you know, I, mom, I try to give mom a little bit of a time off in the morning and at night, you know, it's like the first two or three hours in the morning, if he's up at six 30, I'm already up anyway. So I go in, I grab him, I let her sleep and, I try to instill that in him. Obviously it's different times have changed. You know, I don't live on a farm, you know, he, he lives in a house. He, he goes out back or the big pool. He's got, goes in the garage, there's dirt bikes and you know, all these cool, I didn't have all that, you know? Yeah. So it's tough. You know, I try to let him know that, you know, hard work pays off every morning. I tell him this, you know, and every night when I put him down, I say, listen, Jet, his name's Jet William Koscheck. And, and I took his middle name after my grandfather and I tell him every morning, I say, listen, son, it's like, life is tough. You know, if you want to be successful, you got to know these two, these, these four words, hard work pays off. You know, mm. yesterday we were riding his little, his little e-bike, you know, and he, he, he looks over at me and says, daddy, cause I was working on my bike, fixing the brake. He goes, daddy, hard work pays off. You know, <laughs> so he gets it at three years old, you know, yeah. and I try to instill that in his life every single day because, you know, he's growing up totally different than I grew up. You know, and I'm and I'm thinking in my brain every day, how am I going to make his kid tough? You know, yeah. you know, how am I going to make him a hard worker? And it's just every day you got to tell him, hey, hard work pays off, kid. Hard work pays off. You know, those are the things that I tell him every day and, and choices, decisions and consequences. You know, you got to make the right choices, Jet. It's just that simple. You make bad ones, you have bad consequences. So those are things that I try to instill in my son every single day. It's the same lessons that my grandfather taught me. So I'm trying to pass that generation down so that, you know, when the next cost check comes, you know, whether it's he's a motorcycle racer or a fighter or a jujitsu guy or a wrestler that he knows when they get in there to, to compete with this little man, they, they're going to know that he's worked because he knows what hard work does and, and what happens if he works hard, he gets paid off. So, you know, it's, it's simple. You know, we go to, we go to, um, I'm probably saying target, you know, but we go to target and he wants a car. I said, well, did you work hard today? Did you bring your money? You know, so <laughs> you don't get it. You don't get it unless you work hard. So, yeah, but yeah, it's life lessons, man. I'm hey, just grow- trying to pass on the generation. Growing up on a farm is a good thing. And it does, it yeah. does instill a work ethic. You take a look at, you know, you, Matt Hughes. Now I have a farm. I got attacked by barbed wire today because I had a cow born. I had a yeah. little baby bull born today, there you but. Go. You know, one of the things that was always known about you was you were the hard worker and you were the guy that just, gr- you were, you're a grinder. You would mm-hmm. grind people out. As your career went on, you changed a little bit. You started getting more into the stand up. It was the, well, it's the same John, disease that every wrestler gets into. John, Go ahead. let's just be real. Let's be real, John. It's boring laying there watching me lay on somebody and beat them up, but let's, let's, <laughs> maybe, maybe not like a Chris Lytle. Remember Chris Lytle? But it's, fight, yes, right? I do. Chris, it's it's okay. damn effective. So that, that was an exciting fight on the ground, but let's be real. I, if I ain't going to submit, you know, I had to get paid. You know, yeah. I mean, let's be real. I'll try to make as much money as I damn could because I knew that, you know, oh, hey, I make 50 here, 100 there, 75 there. Oh, another bonus there. It's like, man, you got to collect every penny you can. And, yeah. and just laying down on the ground, beating somebody up is not going to, unless I could submit them, maybe I could get submission of the night. But when you knock people out, man, that's, that's like a, oof. I, I ain't never been addicted to anything, but man, I might have been addicted to try <laughs> to get back. That was some good money. <laughs> you know, that that's was some awesome. good money. You know, yeah. I, I remember flying out of Vegas after I beat Anthony Johnson with a fat paycheck. And I was like, this is sweet. You know, we were on. We were on a private plane heading to Fresno, and I was like, dude, look at these checks. This is dope. <laughs> That's funny. You know, fight of the night, submission of the night, and my pay. I was like, send it home, baby. Let's go. Let's go buy a new apartment, or let's go buy something. Let's invest this. Yeah. So, so th- that being said, is there, a, outside of the knockouts and the fat checks, I mean, is there anything you really miss about the sport? Um, No, nah, nothing, you know? I, because I you you changed. literally went MIA after you said you were done, and you really didn't even announce you were done. You just completely just walked off and just rode off into the sunset. And here we are now talking to you, you know, years removed and having a successful career somewhere else. But it's like not many people know you moved to North Carolina. Not many people know you started your own company. Not not many people know anything because like you you and I were texting the other day. You're like 
I'm not on social media at all. And I'm like, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I like Smart your man. I like your I like your wife's baby pics more than more than I see your talk to you, man. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't get I <laughs> dude social media to me is you know, and I don't want to be political, but uh, and I won't go down that path today. Um, but to me, it's the biggest waste of time. What do I do? Sit there and look at chicks and look at this and look at that. Oh, hey, look at so so. You know, it's like that's a waste of my time. One hour, two hours, three hours a day wasted looking at your phone. Yeah. You know, when I could be focused on, you know, uh, uh, looking for opportunities to bid on or a company or 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 spending time with my family. Yes, it, to me, it's. It, I, I, I'm done. Uh, I'm out. I don't think I'll ever probably get on social media again. Um, you know, I don't have, I don't have a Facebook page. I have an Instagram. I have a Twitter, but I haven't been on those things in a year and a half. Now I was on it there for a while when I owned that, uh, a dirt bike racing series called full gas sprint enduro. I was on it because I needed to promote it, you know, but I'm out of that. You know I mean? Like I'm, I sold that business and, uh, you know, my, my biggest thing now is just focus on family and work. That's all I do, you know, and occasionally like uh, once a week, if I get to go up to my property, I have a, a, a farm up in Oxford, North Carolina. If I get to go up there and ride my dirt bikes and, and hang out and get the RV out and spend the weekend or something, I'm cool, you know? Um, but for me, it's, it's just, I, I work, 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 work. <laughs> you know, don't make me bring it back. That's all no. I do. I work and I spend time with my family. That's yeah. my son every night. I get them. I, I shut my phone off at like five thirty. I, I put it to to do not disturb five thirty six o'clock unless I have something important going on. From five thirty till till eight thirty when he goes to bed, I'm out. I'm I'm with him. I'm with family. I'm just I'm just trying to trying to be the be the be the good dad. You know. That's awesome. So, yeah. Well, you, but you life can't... has changed. Not not it isn't like the old school days where no. we were going to Vegas and <laughs> you know uh, the palms the palms what is that the the real world suite the real world suites yeah. we stayed at yeah no, we don't at do that palms. anymore no not in this we don't household. not not around here <laughs> yeah. but you so. you were talking to us at, uh, off air before we came on you're like man one of the blessings the probably the biggest blessing is you know your son but yeah. then on top of that like man I wish I would have had ten more of these little rugrats running around basically yeah yeah it's, I I started late. You know, he's only three, um, and, and man, the terrible threes or twos or whatever it was, it's been tough. Yep. But it's, we took him to Disney for his birthday, his three, three-year-old birthday, and I was dragging him out of there every day, with, with and people thought I was kidnapping this kid, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, I just went like this. Oh, Jesus. Half Jesus. Back, you know, rolling out. And yeah, he, oh. he was just, I was like, this is nuts, man. But, yeah. but, but. You know, it is what it is. They're kids. They don't know. They're trying to get learn their emotions, and um, you know, and it's just it's it's maddening. But you know, it's good. I, I wish I could. I wish I would have started a lot earlier. Hey. We had about five or six of them, and I'm telling you, every part of it, enjoy yeah. it because it then, goes then, fast. Then I have a whole team. You know, if I could get five more, but I think at my <laughs> age, I think I'm good. <laughs> so. Um, I've noticed that, you know, obviously you're, you're big into lacrosse and, or not lacrosse, but, um, motocross. Yeah. I mean, are you got, you got him riding? Does he have his own bike yet and stuff? He's got oh, yeah. yeah. He's got, he's got the, uh, the little E2. Um, he's in everybody, like even Nick swimmer texts me the other night. Yeah. He goes, dude, that kid, where's his training wheels? I said, he's three, <laughs> Nick, he doesn't need training wheels. And yeah. he's got the last name that's spelled starts with K O S. <laughs> we don't do training wheels in this house, son. <laughs> so, but no training wheels i got him you know it's amazing I, like I, I wish i was you know just had a couple dollars as a kid you know to be able to afford afford a real real dirt bike i mean i saved up and i i remember my first dirt bike was a ds80 it's like a 1986 mono, mono shocks mono shocks and you know i i, I spent 300 bucks from it from my, my buddy jeremy and you know it's like I worked my whole, whole freaking childhood to get this and here my kid gets one and, you know, for his third birthday, I'm like, it's like, she's times have changed, but that's just yeah. the way it is. It's all right. Yeah. But, that, but, uh, you're, but that's what you do as a yeah. parent. You're always wanting to do more for your kid than you had. Yeah. That's What's part, that? that's part of it. Yeah. But just tell, just keep on telling him work, 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 that's work. It. You might not see results today, son, but you'll get better. That's so. it. Yeah, but it's it's cool. I, I love being a dad. I love being, you know, obviously self-employed business. I work, I, I built a, uh, you know, two-car garage with a big, 
big office above it. So I work at home once COVID hit, I I've been, I've been home. So it's been pretty, it's, I've been blessed. So I, I it, heard you, I heard you spend some time building that beautiful house you live in, man. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, geez, we just got done like this past year with doing a remodel upstairs and, you know, cause obviously a kid threw, threw a wrench in, the th- in, in, in life and, <laughs> you know, he's got to have his own space up there to play. And yeah. there's this long thing. And my wife says, oh, we're going to make a playroom. I said, what about a wrestling room? She's like, Nope. <laughs> so, ruthless. So, ruthless. So it's a playroom, but don't worry. I got a, I got a spot in my garage for for some mats and you know punching That's bag. Cool. And he's he's you know I, he, the other night he was you know getting ready for bed because he likes to stall and it's either I'm hungry or hey I want to play with this or you know so the other night I he goes daddy let's box because I have little mitts that I hold for mm-hmm. him and he puts the gloves on. And, you know, and it's really funny because he, he boxes and he's punching with his hands down. He's going, duh, 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 duh. and I said, and he goes, what was that for? I said, because your hands are down, boy. Get your hands up. <laughs> you know, because uh, you just tap him and he's, he's like, he looked at me like, what was that, daddy? Yeah. So, you're not, you're not so supposed you, to hit me. Yeah, but just a little, little let him, hey, man, put that hand up, you know. So, do you, you want to be a boxer, got to do, do it you right. still? Do you still watch the sport at all? Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> all right. Um, I'll just be real with you. Uh, let me just think of the last fight I watched. Okay. Previously to my little brother, because he's a fanatic, you know, um, my little brother, Justin, is is insane. He, that's all he does. He has some app that he just downloads them or whatever. I, I don't know. I don't get involved in that. So, yeah. um we were up in the mountains in, in Banner Elk uh, over mm-hmm. the summer in Jul- June, July. We, sp- we spent a month up there, and my little brother came down for a week, and we watched a 185-pound fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know who the champs are. I didn't know, I didn't know yeah. who the guys, you know. Um, what did they look like? One was, one was a big – I mean, they're big shit. I wouldn't want to be at 185 at that, how's big, how big these dudes are now, <laughs> you know. Um <laughs> It was like for the belt. It was a 185 pound belt. Who was Some that? Guy that was from maybe that was over, over, overseas or something. Yeah, yeah Drickus Drickus, Duplessis. Drickus and Izzy, I think, was the, the main event for that one. Is he the color guy, black guy? Yeah, yeah. Adesanya. Yeah, Adesanya. Uh, is that what? Maybe it was. I I don't remember. Yeah. yeah. Um, he, I don't remember the fight. Yeah. Quite honestly, it was late, and I was like, dude, you can't keep me up this late. This is nuts. So. It's, I moved to Texas, man. It's so hard to watch these fights now until midnight, yeah. one o'clock. Yeah. Like, I don't want to hear it. Yeah, Josh, so, Josh knows what Kostya knows what late is now because he, yeah. I'm always another hour past. You know, the punk there. Yeah, he's he was yeah, all but, he was all okay when he was living in California. Now. Yeah, that, that was probably <laughs> the last fight. Honestly, uh, prior to that, um, the last fight I saw prior to that was a Kane Velasquez fight. Hmm. So mm-hmm. you're talking six years? Yeah, probably. Seven yeah, years, two fights? Jeez. Six or seven years, two fights? I'm too busy, man. You like, just I don't, jumped out. My wife, I don't, my wife gets pissed at me because she wants, she loves, she's a movie buff. She loves movies, mm-hmm. you know? I'm like, one, it's a waste of my time. I want to be, if I'm going to be That's up, way, I'm going to be working. I'm working, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, and, and yeah, it's just, it's to me, it's a waste of time, you know? Just like social media, waste of time, man. You guys, you guys, I, I want you to put your phone on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna text you, and I want to text from both of you for the next week, next five days. Actually, let's just do it for two days. Put on your app. There, I know all these things have apps and they track you. Put on your phone. The next two days, forty-eight hours, starting today. How many, how many hours you spend on on Instagram, Facebook? What are the other ones? I don't even know. No, I, I don't know either. <laughs> what, what, what are they? This is, uh, you, you yeah, this is, what's, this what's is unfair. I'm gonna. I gotta. I gotta go with Josh. This is unfair for Josh because see, I'm an old man, and I'm always out. In fact, he's always texting me or something. He says, "Hey, did you not get my test?" No, I don't carry my phone around. I don't give a shit, right? or a, or I'm in a machine that I can't hear it go off or anything. So yeah. I'm always, you know, I don't go on it until the end of the day. It's it's unfair so. because. But are you okay. spending like a couple hours on it? No. Oh yeah, it's yeah. God no. For sure. God, I'm sure day. I am. Yeah, dude, I am. Think, I am. Just think about. I mean, I get you're 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 like kind of like influencer or whatever you want to call it, one of those dudes that put get into your podcast. You got to get people watching. So you got to yeah, promote it. I understand it. But think about 
if you if you just focus that energy and, and that that time on something else, you know, yeah, on I, something I what you're productive, that's really going to make you money. Social so media have, makes you money. Yes, so. it does. So yeah. there you go. You got it. I, I have. I yeah, have they it all. They sucked you right in, Tom. Yeah, they, they did. Said, they did. <laughs> they did. <laughs> they got you right here. They got the just, they just got just like you. Just like at a Diddy party. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Let me tell you this. <clears throat> That's I. I don't read the news very much, but I'm fascinated with that because I want to see who the hell else is going to get brought down. Oh, oh stand oh. by. Yeah, oh, please stand by, baby. bring they that have... whole industry down. That's disgusting. When you have a when you when you when you're preying on young people and just and women and yeah, no, 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 no. We they have they have three thousand uh, people that are coming forward right now. They had twelve thousand calls within a forty eight hour period, giving information Man. to what, what was happening at these parties, video content, pictures, well, photos. It's 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 gonna oh, be crazy. Hey, did, you know, did you not hear his? Did you not hear his lawyer when they talked about the thousand bottles of of baby oil? He says, "Well, no. you know that it, it, it probably wasn't a thousand. You know, it may have been you know somewhere close to that." It's like I don't give a fuck. <laughs> it's fucking five hundred, a yeah. hundred. Yeah. I whoever, how many it, bottles of baby oil have you had well, in your lifetime? Well, they're yeah. they're saying that it's not, it wasn't baby oil that was in it. It was uh, GH, Lube. GHB. No, GHB. Oh, GHB. It was uh, okay. the date rape drug. Yeah. You guys know more than me. Um, yeah. But I can tell you this. You know, he, <laughs> I, he did. He probably won't make it past the next two weeks. He'll yeah. probably be, and he's in the same jail cell. I heard as Epstein. Huh? <laughs> hey, I have a qu- I have a wow. I have this old saying that says, um, "You have to leave your old life to create a new one." You know, like your old life's going to cost you your new one or your new one's going to cost you your old life. You you, you literally left your old life. You just left it all behind and you packed up your shit from Fresno, your houses and all that stuff. You left your businesses behind and you just literally went. You still, I think you still have, you still have your gyms out there? Nope. No. Okay. So anyways, but but at the time you did when you left, right? You still had them at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But how much of a factor does that play? Like in terms of moving on, because look, you're going to... There's a lot of fighters right now that are struggling to get on from what they from fighting. They just can't leave it behind. This they're they're so ingrained in it that this is all that this is their identity. With you, it was like you that that was not your focus. You're like, I'm done fighting. I'm good. I don't need this shit anymore. I'm out of here. Literally packed up your shit, left, and now look at you. You you have a whole different career, but you didn't you didn't dwell. You didn't keep going back to the gym. You didn't keep, you know, training like as if you were fighting. You just literally packed your shit up and then went and then started a new company. How important is that to be successful? Well, Josh, if you're into sports and you are a guy that likes MMA, football, baseball, basketball, you're probably a guy that likes to bet on those sports. And BetUS is the way to do it. Right now, if you go to BetUS and use our code YouTube150, you will get an incredible 150% above what you put down. And the second time, if you put more money, 125%. Bet US is the way to go. We do give our odds. Sometimes they're great. Sometimes they're not. I'll be honest. <laughs> but we do give our odds for Bet US, and they are absolutely a fantastic betting site. John, that's why they call it betting, buddy. We're, we're betting on ourselves to win. That's what I'm Sometimes. betting on myself to do. So, Ooh. look, we, we really enjoyed using their odds over there, and they've actually come out with some early odds that, they, that we had talked about for the, um, for the newest pay-per-view that is coming up. And that's going to be a fantastic one. So make sure you guys tune in, head over to BetUS, use the use YouTube 150, get 150% bonus on your first deposit. On your next two deposits, you get 125% bonus. So guys, look up, head up, head over to BetUS and use our promo code YouTube 150. Um, well, you know, the way I looked at one is leaving Fresno is like, you know, I had, you know, I made good, I made pretty good money. Um mm-hmm. Wasn't enough to retire on, no. But you know, it's gonna figure out the next chapter of my life. But I've been broke multiple times in life. You know, I, I grew up poor. So for me, it's like you 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 go from being poor, you make a ton of money, and then to me, it's like oh, I know how to do that. If mm-hmm. if I was to, to take a risk on my, you know, and I will, I've always been a type of person to take risk upon myself. You know, like if if I'm the guy that's out there in the front leading the way. I'm willing to take that risk because I know that I'm just going to work, 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 you know, and, and then I'll end up someday getting the results that I want. So it's, it's no, it's, 
it's just sweat equity, you know, and anything I do, it's just sweat equity. Um, so taking that chance and leaving Fresno were, to me was just, you know, okay, yeah, hey, I, I pack everything up. I'm done with that. It was just the next chapter. It's like, hey, what do I got to do to freaking make money? Uh, and it's put in the work and, and you're going to get it. And these guys that, that are just, you know, stuck in that realm, it's, you got to figure out what you want, one. And then two, it's like, it, it, just go for it. You know, you only, you only lose if you quit. You only fail if you quit. So I'm, I'm not a quitter, you know, I'm not going to go in there and be like, okay, hey, I started. Yeah. You may, you may redirect yourself right or left here and there, but you know, if you really believe that, that you can build a business or, or do something, maybe you don't have the equity, go find it. You know, there's plenty of programs out there, the SBA, all kinds of programs, you know, that are government, you know, hands out, you know, grants and things like that to get a business started. And, um, you know, it's like, you go figure it out. You go study, you go research, and if you're betting on yourself, like I bet on me, I'm going to win. So it may not be tomorrow, you know, um, may not be next week, but at some point, my I'm going to win. And mm. you know, and and that's just kind of the mentality I had is is leaving. It's just like, man, I'm done with MMA. There's, there's, you know, I made the money that I made, and you know, uh, Nick Zinkin told me once. He goes. He, I said, call, I, I was going to retire, you know, right after the UFC thing. And, and then, you know, obviously the Bellator was, you know, kind of, you know, didn't work out for me. And Nick, I, I said to Nick, I was like, Nick, I was like, I don't know if I really want to fight anymore. You know, I was like, I'm so, phys- I'm so focused on my business. It's not that I, I never stopped training hard or never put any effort in. It's just, just when you have that mentality switch of, okay, I'm done. I'm done fighting. You know, it's like, it's pretty hard to be that, that, that lion in there, you know, mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's hard to go out there and be that lion and just say, I'm going to kill them. I, you know, for example, I asked Kane, Kane Velasquez once, you know, and this is that, that lion that I'm talking about. I asked Kane, I say, Hey Kane, why do you fight? And, and Kane said, cause he wanted to kill that dude, like just straight. And I was like, you mean kill him? He's like, I, <laughs> he's like, I want to that's the mentality that you have to have to be a fighter. You know, you have to be like, I, I'll go in there and I'll die before I lose. Mm-hmm. I lost that, you know, because I was so focused on and I was trained out, you know I mean? I trained so many years so hard. And I was just like, man, if I just focus this effort on my business, on, on the direction that I want to go, I know I can win. I've always been winning. You know, it's like, I go back and I tell this story about uh, Dwayne Zinkin and Bob Cook when I first made a phone call with them. You know, I was coaching wrestling in Buffalo, New York, and this goes back to that mentality. And, you know, I, I, I was like, I, I, there's only thing, the only thing I cared about was money. You know, uh, you come from where I come from to, to coaching wrestling and you're making, yeah, I make good money, nice little salary. Yay. That, you know, and I took the first phone call, I, you know, I remember having this discussion with Bob Cook and Dwayne Zinkin. I said, and I'll get back to the Nick, the Nick Zinkin thing in a second. Um, Cause I didn't finish that, but the phone call with, with Bob Cook, you know, and, and Dwayne Zinkin was, Hey Josh, you know, it's like, I said to them, I say, hey, can I make money in this? And they said, you know, can you win? I said, shit, boys, I've been winning my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be easy. I'm yeah. going to say, get ready to write me some checks, you know? Um, but, you know, back to the Bellator thing with Nick Zinkin was, it was, you know, I said, Nick, I was like, I'm, I'm done, man. I don't have that, that, Cain Velasquez fighter attitude, you know, where I, I just want to go in there and hammer guys and just, uh, obviously I love to win. Yeah, I love to mm-hmm. compete, but it was, and when you're a professional athlete and you compete for so long, you know, I've been competing at the highest level since I've been four or five years old, you know, wrestling. And mm-hmm. I, I just said, Nick, I was like, he, he goes, Josh, stop. He's like, you make and you take is, is who cares if you're winning or losing, you get your ass in there and you, you, you do what you can to win, but you let them pay you until they don't want to see you anymore until they don't want to pay you. And I said, all right, that's a good idea. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I took as much money as I could, you know, winning fights. I, obviously I trained every single fight. I, you know, I, I would never disrespect myself or never disrespect the people that are paying to watch me. I went in there and trained hard every time. You know, it was just the, the attitude. I lost it. You know, I, did, I didn't have that attitude. And, and it, it since passed me. And I was so focused on building a business and what am I going to do next? And, you know, how do I get to the next the next phase, the next chapter? And, 
you know, and, and that was part of my reason to, to pick up and, and leave California. One, I was paying a ton of taxes. Um, you know, when you make money, you pay more taxes there. Um, so I got out of there and, you know, and I loved my location. I loved my house. I loved everything about it, but it's just a piece of material. You know, I can pick up and, and rebuild that house anywhere in the world. Just you know? property. Yeah, it's just property. That's yep. the way I like so, it. So, so for me, it's, it's, it was just, you know, hey, man, let's take a chance. You know, um, you, you talk a big game. You say you're a hard worker. Let's go prove it. So uh, here we are. Um, you know, next, next phase, next chapter. I, I wish I had more time to be able to, to get involved, you know, into sport into the sport of, of mixed martial arts, but I don't, man. Uh, like, I literally work. Yeah. yeah, we'll just say that. I, I work. And, let, me ask, let, me, yeah. let me ask you this. <clears throat> I have so many questions for you, honestly. But Shoot, your, son, your, your son, Jet, yep. are you ever going to show him any of your fights? Um, I think he's seen, when he was like one years old, he might have seen something on YouTube. He's like, Daddy, that, 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 that. But mm. yeah, he'll, he'll watch them. I mean, I don't. I don't mean, I, I might be a little embarrassed Why? Know, for him to see the ultimate fighter, <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, okay. Let me ask you about the, look at the ultimate fighter is you were a wrestler. You, yeah. you had no fight, true fight experience going into no, that. None. But I never, John, I never trained one day of mixed martial arts. <laughs> but you became one of the hot buttons of that entire show. Yeah. You and Bobby Southworth. And we just talked to Bobby, and he talks to this day about how, how people give him shit about Chris Lieben and stuff like that. Yeah. But it was you and Chris Lieben had this battle, and it was you guys were in the same, you know, weight class to you know to go against each other. It was it was good psychological warfare both ways. It's the way it's yeah. supposed to be. The one thing that I remember coming off of that show, and it was that you were always very respectful. Yeah. At least with me there on the show, cameras off, anything like that. And I thought this is a good guy, man. And, and I knew that you had wrestled at Edinburgh and things like that. After that show went through and everybody watched and everything and, and everything blew up, I remember being at a, at a, a UFC, Michael Bisping and you both walk in basically at the same time. And Bisping was the bad guy of season three. You were the bad guy of season one. And they booed the hell out of you. Yeah. Chuck Liddell. I, I was Chuck Liddell and, uh, and uh, Tito. You remember it. Yeah. Yeah, it was Chuck. With it. I'll, I'll tell you a good story about it. Um, uh, they showed me on the Trumbotron, and that place went freaking nuts. Too, yeah, you know, and I'm like, oh, holy shit, this is not cool, you know. So <laughs> I, I creep in. I'm like thinking I'm gonna just creep in and be like, oh hey, I'm here. Yeah, that place went absolutely Mandalay Bay. That place went ape shit crazy, booing me. And Dana White comes over and shakes my hand. And he goes, hey, congratulations. I said, what? They're booing me. Well, I think fucking oh, congratulations. And he goes, yep, they care. You're going to make a lot of money. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if you remember. I went over to you and I shook your hand. And I said, hey, yeah, it's all good, brother. Yeah. And it was just a matter because I wanted you to know, don't don't worry about all the all this. This is actually yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. And that's what Dana said to me. He it's was tough. tough. It's tough in the beginning. Yeah. It's tough yeah. to understand that. Yeah. I, like I said, I don't even, you know, I mean, I, I'll let you keep asking some questions, but I don't, I couldn't even tell you what, what fighters get paid now. You know, I couldn't even tell you what they well, get I can paid. tell you this. They're making a lot more than we ever did. Oh, well, good for them. Well, bitches. that means the sport's changing in a positive it is. way. So good. Good. It is. Bravo. It is. Good job. You know, uh, hopefully, hopefully that continues to, to better because, you know, as a fighter and Thompson, you know, and John, you know, from being around it, you know, we train hard, you know, these, these fighters, they dedicate themselves and, and they should be rewarded because they're the asset that everybody's coming to want to see. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they should be compensated fairly. And, and I don't want to take, you know, guys' podcasts up for just, you know, bitching about fighter pay because I don't know what they get paid. So yeah. I, I just think that if, if things are changing, you know, they should change with the economy too. Inflation. Hey, seven percent, twelve percent, thirteen percent. Let's give these boys a raise. I know they got signed yeah. contracts, but hey, yeah. where's inflation at in this yeah. take place? You know, so hopefully, hopefully they're they're all getting paid better now and, and things are things are better. I, I you know, I, I just think that you know, we worked our asses off at AKA and everybody did. You know, there's some guys that were just very talented, didn't work as hard, but at, at the end of the day, they, they were forced to work hard because we were on them. You know, we were on these guys. And, 
Um, you know, and, and I don't regret any of the decisions I've made throughout my career. It's, you know, hey, I made them. Uh, most of the decisions I made were, were probably based upon how can I make more money? Um, <laughs> so, you know what I mean? So it was, it, to me, it was a business and I ran my, I was self-employed and I ran my own business for, you know, 12, 13 years, whatever it was, how many years I fought. So, um, I couldn't even tell you when I retired. I don't, I don't even, it's, it's out. I couldn't even tell you the date of my last fight. You know, I just, do you want to know it? Cause I can tell nope. you, tell me, I don't know. <laughs> February, I, February of 2017, because I, I was your referee. Oh, there you and, go. And, and remember, I'm being hey, honest. Hey, I'll but remember that because I was sleeping probably, huh? But it, it's one of those, <laughs> one, you know, you, you, you see people as they go through their career. Yeah. And it was, and Josh and I talk about it all the time, man. If you're not 100% in, this is not the sport to be in. Yeah. No. And, and, no. and I remember you yeah. in that in that fight. It was like you just were going through the motions. You didn't care. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, this, this is not Josh Kasha because it was your first fight in Bellator. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember that you were the ref. Sorry about that. Oh, don't even worry about it, man. I was, I was, I was his fight referee for the last fight. That didn't work out well either. Yeah. Well, well, maybe you're bad luck, John. Maybe I am bad luck. There's, there's no, there's no doubt. I'm seriously bad luck. <laughs> yeah. But you know, you know, and, and like I said, I don't regret anything in my in my career. I, I think I had, I think I put it all out there every time I went in there or tried to. I, I trained hard. Um, you know, and, and I made a lot of good friends. Um, do I keep in contact with a lot of people now? Nah, not really. Um, you know, the people that, that do, because I don't have social media, so I don't keep up with everybody. And mm -hmm. and the, the real true people will hit me up every now and again, and it's just right where we left off. You know, I mean, like Thompson, we haven't talked in quite a bit, but, you know, I'm sure if we got on the phone call, we, we'd probably spend an hour talking about our kids and talking about past things, and, yeah. you know, so... So for me, it's, it's, man, I'm just so focused on life. I'm, I'm focused on trying to just better my, my family and put my family in a better position. Every single day I wake up every, every, every night I go to bed, you know, it's like, you know, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's just, for example, the other night I woke up at, at, at I went to bed. I finally got to bed around nine o'clock because my little guy was down and this is the first time I was just like, I'm exhausted. I got to go to bed. I woke up at one thirty and I was up from one thirty to five thirty in the morning working because my I just had something pop in my brain while I was yeah. sleeping. I was like, "Oh my god, what am I doing?" One thirty in the morning, I'm emailing employees and you know just getting things get just getting. I'm like, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to crush it. I got four hours of sleep. This is go. Let's go. Let's go. So, um, but yeah, it's 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 life has changed, um, but in a sense it hasn't because I still wake up, you know, with a mission you know, to be better every day. And that's what the same as what I did when I wrestled. That's the same what I did with them when I fought. It's mission to be better. How can I win? How can I, you know, go get more contracts? How can I help people? And how can I better the lives of our employees? Mm -hmm. so. Josh, we were lucky enough to be able to continue our relationship with OnlyFans. Now, OnlyFans started out as a basic way for people to be able to come together with people of knowledge in sports. Yeah, it went in different directions, but we're trying to bring them back to sports because sports is where it's at. We have so many people in the MMA world, the boxing world, the surfing world that are on OF, and you can be a fan of theirs. You can go to OF. If you don't want to see any of the girl stuff, you don't have to. It'll never come up in your feed. Only sports is what you want. Well, only sports is what you're going to get. That's true, man. Look, a lot of fighters have jumped, jumped on this bandwagon like we did when we first started working with OnlyFans. So when I started off with OnlyFans, we were the very first podcast that they've ever worked with. And then we led them into signing. Just say that great, again. Yeah, yes, we, we are the were. only podcast. The we were the first. first podcast that they ever worked with when they signed with us. So we, uh, we, uh, we've actually helped open up the doors for a lot of other top talented fighters to sign on the bandwagon. So with the only fans you've got, Demetrius Johnson is on there. Luke Rockhold is on there. AJ McKee is on there. Chris Cyborg is on there. So many top athletes that are on there. Go ahead and check them out. Subscribe to them. Subscribe to us. It's fun for a little extra content. If you guys are looking for some more one on one connection, uh, with your favorite fighters and with your favorite podcast over here. Go ahead and hit us up over there. And uh, look, we're gonna. You guys will have access. Ask questions so we can answer them a little bit more. A little bit more one on one with us on that on that platform than you do get on, with us on YouTube. So go ahead and head over to OnlyFans. Subscribe to our Wayne and channel over there. It is free. It is free. There will be some pro some content that we will put over there that will cost. John and I are still working that out. But look, I know a lot of you guys ask questions about John's 
uh, refereeing seminar command. So I wanted to, where him and I are trying to figure out something out that we can do there. And I also too, with me, a lot of you guys are hitting me up in my DMs. Hey, what about this in this technique in fighting? What about this in jujitsu? What about this in, in kickboxing? Why didn't the fighter do this? Well, if you guys want those kind of breakdowns, I'm willing to go ahead and jump on a, on a video chat with you guys and do something over there. Or I can just go ahead and put it onto a video and place it up for you guys over there. And that's something that we can work on in terms of pay. So look, we're looking forward to continuing our partnership with OnlyFans and uh, looking forward to seeing you guys over there. Subscribe to us over there at OnlyFans. Good. Okay. Uh, you know, your first, your first two fights, uh, I happened to be the one that cornered you. We drove up to, I think, Susanville. And, no, uh, uh, up in Nevada? It was La it was, yeah, it was in Nevada. Yeah, it was in Nevada or Susanville, I think, in that area. Susanville, Reno area. I think we're yeah. somewhere in that area. Yeah. And uh, I remember um, you had trained with us for like, I don't know, a couple. It was only maybe like a month, maybe a month yeah. or two. And you were like, and just that whole take on, yeah, no, no, I, I got to just fight. I came here to fight. I got to fight. Like, so you ended up taking those two fights. It was a tournament. It was two fights in one night. Yeah. And I was like, I was nervous, man. I was really nervous because I've been fighting for a while. And so I was like, man, you just had this intensity about you. Like, oh, this is going to be easy. Don't worry about it. And it just seems like the guys that come from high level wrestling, you know, you, even DC had that, that mentality. King was just like. Man, it's just another day, man. No big deal. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to knock this dude out. I'm going to beat this guy up. And sure enough, you know, your first two fights, it was one was a KO, one was a submission in those first in that night. And it was yeah. quick. And you'd only been with us for a couple of weeks. Yeah. I called I called up Bob. And I don't know if you ever, I called up Bob because Bob wasn't able to make it. And I was like, bro, you got yourself a real one here. This kid, he, he doesn't care. Yeah. And it was one of the moments where I felt like probably the most connected with you in terms of friendship wise, but also just being there cornering you and stuff. But just seeing your, your level of professionalism, like this is what I'm here to do and there's nothing going to stop me. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that right, vaguely. Um, that was like vaguely. hot. There was like, there was like, 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 yeah. It, well, here's the deal with that one. So, it was like, there was like thirty people at this fight. Yeah, and there was more. There was more fighters than there were than there were, you know, fans. It was it was just this little casino up in the middle of nowhere, and it was hotter and shit. And you know, I just was like, I'm gonna f kill these guys, man. I had that. I had that Cain Velasquez mentality, you know. Yeah. And, um, but it was it was an amateur fight. I don't know if you got paid for that fight. Did no, you well, get paid for they that? were pro. Well, there were no amateur fights then. Yeah, that's true so as well. It was a pro fight, but I and the guy was like, "Oh, sorry, we don't have money to pay me." So Dwayne and Bob gave me like three hundred bucks. I was like, well, "Okay, yeah, all right, three hundred bucks with me, you know." So here we go. <laughs> it's 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 better than nothing, you know. Yeah, but, it was better. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, just three hundred bucks <laughs> fights in one um, day. <laughs> what what the hell was I thinking? Yeah, <laughs> but three hundred dollars. Hold on, you're gonna give me checks? Yeah, yeah. I'll fight. Yeah, <laughs> there you go, three hundred dollars. <laughs> three hundred bucks. Like yeah. that was a lot of money. Yeah, you know, it was. I was like, yeah, I'm rich. I got three hundred bucks. Yeah. All Let's right. go. It's time to party. You can't Man. even buy. A, you can't even buy a Happy Meal. You know, at McDonald's for that now. <laughs> no, not even. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, I got a question for you. As far as you were part of the very first UFC fight for the troops was at Miramar air, uh, air base in San yeah. Diego. Yeah. And you fought a, you got, you fought a guy that no one had known of Jeff Joslin. I don't, I don't know what you knew of him, but he was a hot ticket up in Canada. Great jujitsu guy. And you, it was one of your most impressive performances because you just destroyed him. And it was a long drawn out process of just, it just continued to get worse and worse for him. Do you remember that fight? What do you remember out of that entire thing with all the they had they had the airplanes outside yeah. we were in the hangar and all that stuff yeah yeah i remember that that was a pretty cool event as a miramar out in san diego and yep. uh you know there was just the, there was not that many like uh um marines there but it was it was just loud oh it was loud. yeah it was loud that place was they were stomping and just you give those marines you give them some some beer and you know it just is like one one marine would it, it it felt like there was like ten of them. You know, you give him a beer, he, he turned from one to ten. It was that place was uh, not. It was pretty cool. It was you know they had the big helicopters and all that there. And uh, you know I actually have a, a a friend who just who just left there. He just he served there for the last two years, and I tell him all the time I fought and you know uh, I fought there. And you know he's he's a former wrestler and uh, he's a 
uh, well, shit, he's a colonel now, or go, about to be a colonel, um, mm. you know, for, for the Marine Corps. Um, and, you know, he worked for the two-star general because that's a two-star uh, two bullet there um, at, uh, at Miramar. So um, he worked directly with the general there and, he, and just, yeah, he, he, you know, he, he, he would go into that hangar. I said, yeah, I fought, I fought in that hangar. You know, he's like, oh, cool. So, yeah, just amazing, you know, the things that uh, the UFC did for, for a lot of that at, at that time, you know, it was obviously their market. So it, it was only fitting, fitting for them to give back, you know, right. to, to, to the servicemen. And we were what Iraq was still gone. And then you had Afghanistan heating up. And so there was a lot of deployment. It was pretty, it was pretty, uh, pretty sketchy overseas at that time. You know, we were in two wars. So, um, you know, so it, it was good that the, that they, they pitched in and, and did those fights for the troops, you know, obviously at Fort Bragg, um, you know, was, was, was an amazing event, you know, for, for us. And, you know, I, um, uh, I, John, did you ref that match? At the, Which one? The, the one at uh, Fort Bragg. No. The fight for the troops there. Okay. No. Uh, all that, um, I, I can't remember who it was, but, you know, it was just, you know, we're in the back warming up and, you know, Mike Swick was the co-main event and he knocks, was it John, Jonathan, Jonathan, Jonathan something from Canada. Jonathan Gillet. Gillet. Yep. He knocks him out. I, re I repped you against Jonathan Gillet though. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I remember that. We'll talk about that one too. <laughs> uh, um, is that who I, is that who I fought for the troops? No, Yoshida. No, yeah. no you, you, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, um, but yeah, you, you, you think Mike's we're in the back warming up me and Bob Cook and Mike Swick knocks this dude out and comes in clips. I said, Oh, great. And they were just started. They just started giving these bonuses. I'm like, well, I said, Bob, I said, shit, there goes the knockout. A nice bonus. What do, how do I got to win now? You know? Um, so I go out there and, you know, um, that place was rocking, man. It was awesome. Um, and, you know, I actually went back there not long ago to a uh, couple of my buddies, they're doctors here in Raleigh, you know, they're, they're huge, like bare knuckle fighting guys. We went to one of them at the same Coliseum where, mm -hmm. where we fought and um, I, I, you know, just knock out of the night bonus was gone. I said, okay, well, what do we got to figure out? I said, well, let's go out there and let's, let's figure this thing out. Let's just try to get a win. And, uh, you know, knocked Yoshido out and in the first round, right at the end of the first round. And, you know, that place went berserkers, man. I, I just was like, holy smokes. That was, that was like my real first taste of like, oh, my God, there's that drug. <laughs> you know, oh, you, know you, 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 you roll away with a big fight, knock out of the night, fight of the night. Yeah, I got both of them that night, I believe. And, and then uh, and, and just in front of all those troops that were just going nuts and you know, it just, it was a pretty amazing event. And, you know, I, I applaud the UFC and I still do today. And, you know, and I, 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 if you look at one of my, my bios, I talk about that, you know, like, mm -hmm. Hey man, we, we raised tons of money at the end of the day. It wasn't just about, you know, the troops that are there. It was about what the event was for, you know, and, and the event raised, you know, $4 million for the Intrepid Hero Fund and, and the Ronald McDonald House, which houses people that are injured that, at the Fort Bragg that, you know, when, when they're injured, they have this place now that their families can come and stay, you know, so it was, it was more, it was more about, you know, just supporting and, and I applaud the UFC and Lorenzo and the, the Dana and, and everybody and Frank Petita for, for putting that on because that truly was a moment in my life that I realized that, you know, would come back to me tenfolds in the business that I'm doing now. Um, you know, and literally it's just, uh, you know, they did, they did a good event that night and it helped a lot of people and it's still currently today helping a lot of people. And, um, you know, that $4 million that they, that they donated, you know, was just, was just amazing. So, and it was well needed. And, and, you know, that's one of the, one of the nights that truly stands out in my mixed martial arts career. And it is, you know, fighting for the title is cool, you know, um, you know, fighting GSP was, was cool, but it doesn't compare to what that fight did for me as a person and what it did for, you know, all the people that it, that it helped. So you mean that that fight beats you know all the nights you spent in the Ultimate Fighter house? 
<laughs> I, I, the old, you mean to tell me the Ultimate Fighter House wasn't the greatest experience ever that you you, you ever no. experienced? No, we were guinea pigs. <laughs> you know? Yes, you were. We were you lab were. rats, man. Yeah. They had no, they had no damn clue what the hell they were doing on that show, filming it at first. I mean, shit. Now, what they haven't done it, they do it in five days. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So we were there for like three months. It was insane. We had Bobby on yesterday, Bobby Southworth on, and we were talking to him because we had Kenny Florian about a week, two weeks oh, ago, cool. and he was talking about Kenny's like, man, it was I was nervous to go there, and I was and just all these other things. Bobby's like, oh, you know, I, we thought we were just gonna go there and play games, yeah, and then you know he's like, and then then they they were wanting us to fight, and then that's the whole yeah. you know, hey, you want to be a fucking fighter speech came out, and yeah, even you, I remember you saying, no, nah, man, like you're gonna have to pay us to fight. We can get paid. We came here to 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 get paid. That's really what it came down to. Yeah. And if you want us to fight, we got to get paid to fight. And so, but uh, tell me, tell us a little bit about your experience in that house. I mean, I, we saw what we saw on TV, but what was your overall take on the experience of that house? And from the terms of being selected to even get into the house, that's one. Two is, you know, John Fitch was supposed to be in it and he got turned away at the airport. They said, yeah. no, we, we already filled your, we filled your spot or, you know, we're going to have to just have you drop you off. We I filled mean, your spot means, with a guy named Josh Kostcheck. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, they need it. Listen, as as much as as much as I yeah, you know, like to pat myself on the back, they needed a guy like me. Oh yeah. <laughs> Think about you it. Did. I, I did. I didn't hear these shits. I care one thing. How the hell and the reason I dyed my hair and I start saying, All right, they're never gonna love me because I don't have the style that they're gonna love. All right. Yeah. Because I said, All right, well, what's the next best option? They hate me. <laughs> yeah, you know true. what I mean? Like, like I was like, they're never gonna love me, and I don't really care. I just, I just need to figure out how to make money. You know, yeah. three hundred bucks fighting two dudes in one day ain't enough. No, it's not. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I figured, like, I'll just be, I'll just be, I'll just be a total asshole. Yeah. You know, I just said I'm gonna just be an asshole. I'm gonna figure it out, and mm. you know, like, I was just a dick. We'll just say it. You know, well, uh, yes and I, no. I, I used to tell people that it was just a stick because dude, you had a, you have a great side to you, man. And I don't yep. want to pat you on the back too much or toot your own horn, but brother, you have a great side to you that not a lot of people see and know, you know, yeah. I, I've seen that side of it. I've seen the other side too, but I've seen that side of it a, a lot more than people give you credit for. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, listen, I, it was an act for me. Like mm. I just tried to freaking figure out how to make myself popular so that they have no choice. They can't get rid of me. You know, mm. um, and I just try to say, you know, I'll do whatever I got to do to, to, to make money. And, you know, I mean, and to a standpoint, well, let's be real here. I ain't going to do some crazy things, but, um, you, you know, but I just tried to focus on, you know, what can I do to, to make myself stand out? One, I was like, I'm going to dye my hair. You know, you don't mm. see very many mulatto guys, you know, half black, half white dudes with, with bleach blonde hair, with an attitude, <laughs> you know, I, I still got it. <laughs> Josh is. <laughs> Let me Look at that, Thompson. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, you won't. You won't. You won't see me flexing, brother. You I, won't see me flexing. I'll tell you this. I haven't worked out. I don't. Even, I don't want to tell you how many. <laughs> how many? How long it's been since I have worked out? I'm no. I'm no Justin Wilcox on Instagram. My Jesus, wife, man. My wife showed me the other day. She goes, "Look yes. at this guy. He look at Bro. this guy. I'm not he, him, but I can tell you this." I don't so work bad. out much. The only thing I get to do is is I get to ride my dirt bike, you know, for a couple hours here and there. And that's that dude's it. still ripped, man. He said, yeah. I saw a picture of him yesterday chopping wood or something on his Instagram. I'm yeah, like, my wife Jesus. Me that. Just my wife showed me know. that. And I, I, I said, tell him, put a shirt on. He looks, he's embarrassing himself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's embarrassing me just by yeah, me. I'm like, yeah. God, I can't, me, I can't look at this. Lift up the shirt. Let's see it, Thompson. No, no, let's not. Do you even have ass? <laughs> let me see. Let me see. Hold on, hold on. Oh, that's ugly. Put that thing away. <laughs> one, you need to get, you need to work, ma'am. You need to work on like, a tan, one, so, <laughs> two. I wasn't <laughs> born with that, that, that natural <laughs> melanin. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, back to the ultimate fighter thing. It's just, yeah, it's, it was wild. You know, um, I, I'm sure if we all got together, they tried to do a reunion thing, but you know, I was like, listen, I'm, they tried to do a union reunion a, a couple mm -hmm. years ago. They did. You didn't show up. And well, shit. And everybody's like, Oh, typical, typical cost check, you know, <laughs> and I was like, listen, 
you want me to take time away from my business, take time away from this, and you don't want to give me a couple bucks? It's uh, like, that's true. what I'm making in a day ain't going, you know, what I'm losing in a day <laughs> yeah. with time. And I was like, mm, no, thanks. I ain't got time for that. I, yeah, and I was nice. in the fire too. At you would think time, you I would remember. think that they would pay you a little bit, like put you in a nice hotel, maybe well, take I'm care sure of you and your put wife. Us in a nice case. hotel, they, they would own put them us all. In, what is that? The station casino. They would have put us no. in that little, you know. <laughs> They've a got nice a bunch hotel. of nice hotels now, man. That's they a nice own a hotel. bunch of nice hotels. Well, well, you know, I was just in Vegas. Um, I, I, I traveled through Vegas not long ago uh, for Prairie Fire, out mm -hmm. in uh, out in out in Vegas. It's my uh, one of my friends, who's a retired general Scott Miller. He was a general. This, he oversaw Afghanistan for four years. Trump put him over there, and he got out before the withdrawal, and you know he retired. But he was a JSOC commander at the time, and. Uh, he was a JSOC commander, um, and then he went to Afghanistan after that. He's a really good friend of mine, Scott mm -hmm. Miller. Uh, Scott asked me and Hoist Gracie to come out to um, Prairie Fire, and that might have been the last time I posted on my social media, just kind of promote that for him, you know. Uh, but Prairie Fire is a is a is an awesome shooting place out in in the desert, past Vegas. Uh, I can't remember where the location is, but you just look it up on YouTube or 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 what is it, Google or bing or whatever yeah. you like to use um but it's amazing it's like the best they, they advertise it's the best shooting shooting day of your life if you love shooting right. guns look up prairie fire uh one of my friends is, is on the board scott general scott miller so hmm. so the last time i was in vegas me and hoist gracie went out and we did a, an event there for for him um you know and he's this dude's hardcore made me that's that's probably the last time i ran you know, he, he's like, he, he's like, Hey, Oh, oh we're, we're going to do a 5k. I'm like, do you have a bicycle? Uh, you, you had know, a bicycle? Like, do you, five, do you have you, a, a hovercraft? Yeah. Do you have, can yeah. I have a Hummer? Like you're asking me to do a 5k, Jim Scott. And I'm like, yeah. God, dude. so I sucked it up. I did a 5k. It was raining. <laughs> it was shit weather. I was like, dude, you, yeah. I must really love you general Miller because you yeah. got me out here. One, you got me working out. I don't work out anymore. <laughs> Two, you know, you got me working out in the damn rain. Um, yeah. But the last time I was out there, you know, uh, I met up with a friend, um, Tall. Um, and then I have some of these, some some friends that own, uh, that own they own a, a hot uh, a, a sauce company. Mm -hmm. um, and their Instagram handle is sauce. So, yeah. um, but they, we all met up at dinner. And then the Fatita, uh, Lorenzo Fatita was right next to us at, mm -hmm. at his casino. And we hung out and talked and just re re rekindled a little bit about, you know, the, the whole experience. But yeah. those those dudes, you know, they they're money guys, you know, the, you know, they're money guys. They they just yeah. they care about the dollar bill and oh, yeah. they, they care about helping people. They I'm sure they help a ton of people. I don't know what they do yeah. in their, their day to day businesses. But at the end of the day, you know, I got to I got to hang out with him for a little while and, and speak. But that's the last time you know, that, that I've been involved with anybody other than you guys, you know, mm -hmm. with, with mixed martial arts background, you know, like mm -hmm. I'm so far removed. It, it kind of stinks, but you know, it is what it is, you know, cause there's a yeah. lot of good people in this industry. It's, it's a lot of there hard is. working, a lot of hardworking blue collar wrestlers and, and just blue collar people, good Americans that, that care about the country and care about, you know, making a good, honest living. And, and, you know, I miss it sometimes, you know, being around a lot of people, um, you know, but, uh, you know, hey, man, I, I'm on to, to, the, to the next chapter. And that's, you know, focused on business and, and family. Well, I'm going to I'm going to get you out of here on this, man. Is there anything you want to promote? Do you guys have any events coming up? Is there something you guys are sponsoring? Anything like that? Uh, we do a bunch of sponsor, you know, like it's, it's, it's maddening. Um, you know, everybody's always hitting us up for stuff and we try to, we try to give back, you know, the seal foundation and, you know, the special forces charitable trust foundation. We, we try to give back to the Marshawk, uh, Marine Raider foundation. Uh, we do a lot of stuff, you know, me and my friend Jody, he's a retired Marshawk commander. Um, we, we created the, the Mint 400, uh, warrior class and we've raised over $300,000 the last three years, you know, for, for the foundation at the Marshawk foundation, um, or the Marine Raider foundation. And, you know, he's done amazing things for that foundation. I, you know, I try to support when I can, but we're always trying to give back. Um, you know, I, I got actually today, a, a little kid who has, you know, that one of our operators at uh, special forces down in, at Fort Bragg asked me to 
you know, donate, uh, you know, some money for a kid that, that wants a dirt bike. He owns a dirt bike track. And, you know, so we're, we're pitching in to, to help out this, this young, young kid who has a dirt bike, who mm-hmm. all his, the handlebars are all crooked. And so we, we got a new handle, we got a new dirt bike for him. And That's nice. it, it's just things like that. Just, just, you know, I'm in a, I'm in a good place and, and I'm fortunate to be able to have, you know, good people around me, um, and, and just good guidance and, and, and it's, it, it never hurts to, to lend a hand, you know, I know, obviously, you know, you have a lot of this, uh, you know, the, the hurricane that came through in Western North Carolina is, is affecting a lot of people out there that we know we, like I said, we spend a month every year, every year in that area. And, you know, I wish we could do more, um, you know, and it's, it's just, it's just crazy how times have changed and life is changing every day. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there in need. So, you know, if you find a good organization, you know, like, like the, 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 the Raider foundation or who, what other foundation, whatever it is, just, just get behind them, support them, you know, and, and try to try to give back. Even if it's, if you don't have money, it doesn't matter. Give, give time, you know, time, time is money. So, um, I try to do as much as I can, you know, I'm only limited to, to the amount of, you know, 24 hours in a day. Um, you know, so, um, but you know, if you can take an hour out of your day and, and, and help somebody or, or be kind or whatever it is and just do it, just do it. So that's, that's how John usually wraps up the show is, Hey, if you can do something for somebody, do it, go out there and be kind and do it. You can, that's how we wrap the show pretty much every night. Well, I think I might have watched one of these back in the day, like maybe like <laughs> ten years ago, when nobody yeah. when nobody was watching. That would be I it. Watching guys, uh, yeah. right. appreciate when nobody I appreciate was watching. You, buddy. I was watching. So, yeah, you know. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't care what people say about you, man. I'm always tooting your horn on here, man. I'm trying to yeah. give you as much love as I can, brother. It's and, it's always been a pleasure, man. You know. And where where can I watch this, or where can I just watch your show in general? YouTube. YouTube. You can watch it on YouTube or you can listen to listen to it on iTunes or um Spotify. Spotify. Okay. I don't have any either one of those. I don't do YouTube because <laughs> they're gonna track everything I do. Uh, <laughs> oh jeez. Uh, we got we got can, we got our two you, preppers here. Our here, two preppers. This is what you can do. You can go and you can have your wife instead of looking at the movie on on your screen TV, you can have her pull up YouTube and you can just watch it there real quick and that way it's not on your phone. Boom, get it get rid of it. <laughs> Go All right, that's good. All right. Yeah, I got I got top secret on here, man. I can't. I I can, he, he asked me to download this app, whatever we're on this this yeah. app thing, and I was like, yeah, I was like, he's over like, here, like, he's like, oh, you set me I, up, man. He set like, me up. They already got all my shit, so it doesn't matter anyway. Yeah. So you know, Josh, I just want to tell you, man, it was always an honor to do your fights. You were always a pleasure as a person. You were a pleasure as a fighter. You competed at the fucking at the pinnacle of everything and you always gave it your all i always thought you were a fantastic athlete and i want to tell you that you know what it was always a pleasure just to be around you thank you john i, I appreciate that and how many how many fights can do you know how many fights you reft of mine of yours i would yeah. say honestly as close to like what josh i would say i know i can think of probably six that i know of so six hmm. to seven of your career yeah that's pretty cool <laughs> Yeah. Did the Diego Sanchez when you came back and you beat Diego? Jonathan oh, yeah. Belay was one. Mm-hmm. I think I, I I think I had your your first loss was to Drew Fickett. I think I did seven. That one. Oh, seven yeah, of them. Seven. What seven a fights. dummy! Oh. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was just nothing. Jesus, no Drew Fickett taunting me still to that. <laughs> <laughs> You had to say that name. I'm sorry, man. That was uh, the first one. I think. Uh, uh, I think I just had a heart attack. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You had, uh, you had to say that name. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry, bro. I won't sleep tonight. I'll be so pissed <laughs> off. Don. Oh, uh, you know what? You just got me to go for a run. I'm going out <laughs> to train right now. Oh, that is hey, awesome. brother. Jesus. Just Thank you who just says that man. name, Thompson? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't vet him before that question, yeah. man, or that comment. I didn't know. Jesus. Hey, Seven, brother. What? Twenty seconds left. What a t- Bob Cook. <laughs> One more takedown. I'm like, why don't I just fucking run? <laughs> why don't I just run? Uh, I love it. Run, day, run, Forrest. <laughs> run. Hey, circle, brother. circle. Run. I, I appreciate. I, <laughs> I appreciate you, my man, coming on. I appreciate you so much. And hey, I, listen, definitely when I come out there, we gotta get the families together, man. Yeah, definitely. My little dude, three years old, be taking your kid down. In a- yeah. Oh, look at that. <laughs> yeah. uh, 
Oh, jeez. Oh, good. He'll be brother. pulling the head down. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the one yeah. and only Josh Koscheck. Appreciate y'all.